Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to another episode of McCall Media TV Live, whereby in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to basically write some HTML text to customize and style the footer of your website so that you can do a little bit more than what basically your theme may just allow you to do. And if we get round to it and there is a need, I might also show you a little bit of inline CSS styling as well. If you don't know what these two things are, don't worry, I am gonna be referring to the W3 Schools website where you can get some free online tutorials and read up about the different types of code, both HTML and CSS that we are using today. So if you haven't come across me before, Please do subscribe to my channel, stay notified. I do cover lots of different topics on all sorts of different digital creative technologies from video editing to Photoshop, graphic design, WordPress, do it yourself, tutorials and everything else in between. Here's my socials and how to find me. Okay, so we're gonna dive right on into things today. No hanging around, we're gonna go over to my left-hand side monitor, whereby you will see that I'm on my McCall Media website, and we're gonna scroll right down to the bottom so that I can show you basically uh, a little bit down the bottom here about what you could do with a footer. Now, this is my main business website. It's not the one that we're editing today, but I just wanna point out that obviously, as a business, I need to list my company number, my VAT registration number. I want a little copyright statement on there and my business name so people can find out about me. So I've got a couple of hyperlinks, which we will do some different type of hyperlinks and uh, and that kind of thing and then this just happens to be a little asterisk to do with the uh, fun fact as it were that I've put at the top of my website so this is kind of where we're aiming to go and now this is obviously the website that we're on that we've been working on in these past few tutorials if you did look at the last tutorial I've done you would see that I've actually just mentioned or I think I put the the website name as a footer but because I want to show it to you guys today and edit it we are looking at this footer text right in the very center of my screen at the bottom. So we are gonna jump in to the dashboard of my site where I've already logged in and we're gonna go to appearance and we're gonna customize basically this entire uh, website footer. Now in this Fame Themes One Press website that we are working with, this information happens to live underneath their theme or options and then down here where it says footer copyright so if you're using the same theme as me that's great you know how to find it if you're not that could be a slightly different path you'll need to just investigate I will guarantee you somewhere if you dig deep enough into your theme in the customizer section you will be able to find especially if you've got a paid license and it allows you but you'll be able to turn off and hide that author link so if you look down here this is why we upgraded our site in the last tutorial to be a paid license so that we can turn off some of the, cost, uh, the the branding that comes from the theme authors. Now, as a developer, I can actually get around that. I know how to do so. I'm not gonna teach you guys how to do so because I do believe in ethics and these people work really hard to produce these themes and uh, smart, I was gonna say smarty people like me that know how to do these tricks shouldn't really teach it because it's not really fair. These guys work hard and like everything, they're a business, they need to survive. It's not a huge amount of money for a year's license. Uh, so do support them. Right, and by the way, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape or form. I'm not getting any commission, any kickbacks or anything. I just love these guys and their website. Right, so let's go on over to our customizer. So I've clicked on this big old white box. It's gonna bring up this edited screen at the bottom. If I move myself out the right way, you'll see over on the right hand side, we've got a visual tab and a text tab. That basically means that whilst we're in text, it's like writing code and in visual it's meant to be a real life representation of how the information is going to show on the website however it has some quirks I don't really ever believe it does what it's meant to do on the tin it drives me a little bit mad at times so I generally personally speaking live inside the text code editor area here which is where we're going to start today so I'm going to start off by writing the word copyright and then it's point and click puzzle games okay so I'm just going to literally publish this so you can go and see how easy it is to update the text on your website so as always we've edited we've saved we've updated and now you can see we've got a bit more of a meaningful copyright statement so you can go as quick and easy as you want as that but we're going to jump on over to w3 schools because in their html section she says 
you are gonna there is a section that says entities down the bottom you might have to scroll for it but HTML entities if you scroll to here and scroll down it has this nice little grid and it explains a little bit about what's going on so let me just come back to my website okay as you can see in my business name I've got the ampersand sign which is where I've typed it in the little black bit down there at the bottom if we go into the customizer and we go back and look at this but we're in the um, text section here you can see that the website has recoded or taken away that little ampersand and actually put some letters and a semicolon now if you come up to HTML entities this symbol here has lots of different jobs within code and when your browser is reading in a website it needs to know if this is text like it is in the name of my website and my business or if it's a start of a command. And the easiest way to do that is to actually then put its name into the code, which is what it's automatically done for us. As you can see on screen, it put in the ampersand AMP, which is its name, and the semicolon always finishes off the entity name or number so that we know exactly where we stand. And if we also look down here, here is the copyright symbol. So when you when you do this a lot like myself, you get used to knowing what these little names and numbers are. And some people work with the numbers, some people work for names, I work with the names. And this is just a nice little way of up in your game a little bit um, also in here we've got things like the pound sign euro sign so if you if you're struggling to get like I don't know a dollar sign or something um, you've got some extra bits and bobs there and also if your language uses these little like hats or tilde markers or whatever they're called glyphs above the letters you can find the special letter code versions there and you can use them as well and there's loads and loads of stuff you can look at symbols and all sorts but that's where you find it in W3 schools Go to html come down to the entities and then you'll have these codes so back to our customizer our cost our fame theme has actually put that in there but i'm going to go to the start of the line i'm going to put the ampersand it was the word copy followed by the semicolon and a space and now when i publish this and look at my website changes down the bottom here where have we gone you can now see i've got a copyright symbol and actually what i should have done is put in the word copyright uh, there 2020 oh she says 2020 dash and it should be all rights reserved and then what I actually want to have happen is for this information to go on to the second line but we're in the HTML code which means I actually have to write the HTML instruction which is a pointy um, which is a pointy bracket and the BR for break and then a closing bracket so that little bit here that those four little text items, those four characters, tell the browser that I'm gonna wrap this text onto the second line. So if I publish now and come up here and refresh my screen, you will see now that I have these two lines of text, which is great. But I'm gonna to add to that a little bit more because this is actually a business that is, this website is owned and operated, operated by McCall Media Limited, which is the name of my business. So again, I am going to make sure that the little break, sometimes this little break command does have its tendency just to suddenly disappear and all the text be back on one line. So just keep your eye on that. But we're going to click on publish and we're going to come back over here. And now we're now we're kind of rocking and rolling. This, this footer actually has more meaning and a lot more information is going on. But ideally, McCall Media Limited needs to be a hyperlink to my McCall Media website. So in order to make that a McCall Media Limited hyperlink, we are going to come back over to our footer. Now, this is where I'm going to tell you guys that you can basically uh, cheat a little bit because if we come back over to our visual tab, save you writing the HTML code, if you select the bit of text that you want to turn into a hyperlink, you could click on that chain, okay? And then if we um, actually go to my website, which is probably going to pop up now, there we go, McCall Media, I can, whilst that loads, copy that hyperlink and come back to our customizer and I'm going to paste it in there. Now, whilst we're in this little tool within WordPress, always click on the cog. We are essentially taking traffic outside, outside of our website to an external link. Therefore, we are always going to open that link in a new tab up here in the browser because we don't want to close this or help people surf away from our existing original website. So I'm going to click on update 
Okay, I'm just gonna go back to text to make sure that BR still exists. And as you can see, it's just been taken away purely for no other reason than to, other, to irritate me. I'm gonna click on publish and then I'm gonna come back over here and refresh. And there we go. So now what we've got, the website is using its style sheet just to say, well, how do you style this text? Well, it's gonna be a paragraph text. We'll put it in black for the moment. We'll put it the same height as all other paragraph text and we will make it a red hyperlink because I think somewhere in the settings I said the secondary color of my business is this red so we might have to work on that in a little bit but essentially now we've got something going on a little bit more meaningful now I don't particularly like the size of this text um, I think it needs to be smaller and more discreet so I'm going to come back over to my customizer I'm going to click on my uh, little copyright box now we're in the text editor okay the br still shows thank god uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually put because i'm pretty sure it's the paragraph text i'm just going to write in the triangle brackets html p for paragraph and then right at the end here i am going to do the closing paragraph okay so the difference between the break this one here which is html is an open tag which means it doesn't have an ending so it just literally exists but this paragraph text is our way of telling the browser when it's putting the information on the screen this is where we're going to start writing a paragraph and this is where we're going to end up writing our paragraph so the browser knows how to format all the text in between now that we've done that we can actually add an inline css code to basically style and override our style sheet now our theme comes with a style sheet which if you think of it as being the makeup bag for the website tells us what colors what sizes what fonts what shapes how the layout's going to be etc but um we know that this text is, is paragraph text and i'll show you why in a minute but we want to overwrite the normal instruction we want to do something just a little bit different in this particular scenario which is why we're going to write the code in the actual line of the text as opposed to actually altering the main style sheet so i'm going to type the word style equals and then i'm going to put two quote marks so what this is basically doing now is inside this p tag it's giving the browser an instruction to say we're going to start doing some css code here so that basically get out your makeup bag and go find your specific instead of saying mascara we're going to say do this particular thing instead so we're going to start off by writing the word line height colon and i'm going to put that as 1.0 okay and then i'm going to finish that particular command with a semicolon and then i'm going to put font height uh yeah, font size sorry font size colon and i'm going to put it as 10 point and a semicolon now it could be that we still don't have a lot change i might have to force this with the word important which is a css command to say basically don't do anything else but what i'm saying on this particular text but we'll see if this browser picks it up and takes it because we don't know how the f the actual theme itself was designed so i'm going to click publish we're going to come back over and we're going to refresh and if you looked very carefully this text got smaller and the line gap between them is now quite tight in fact it's probably a bit too tight so i'm going to click on this and instead of saying line height is going to be 1.0 i'm going to say 1.3 and we're going to publish and we're going to refresh again okay that looks a little bit nicer now so now we have our html code here behind for our website so if you look at the top of the screen as let me just move this so you can see it so this is the browser tab that we're in if i click on this the next one to the right hand side is going to open up so we haven't surfed away from our original site we've kept our new site and it's still loading we've tweaked our text and now that we've got this css style code of line in here we can do all sorts of things like we could even change the color of the text so it's an american spelling for color colon and we're going to put the hex code for white which is six f's in a row and then a semicolon so that's where we end the instruction for the color click on publish let's come to our site click on refresh and now we've turned the text white but don't forget this is a hyperlink so it's not normal paragraph text in the eyes of the browser so that is basically how you can start to tweak a little bit put in some manual hyperlinks and if we go back to my home page um, of my main website you will see down here all i've done as well is added a home a gdpr policy because i think it's really helpful to help people even though i've got a plugin that does it down the bottom here and the word contact because 
one of the most annoying things is trying to find out how to contact a company um, and you end up hunting for it. So I, most people will then start by looking in the footer and so I've, I've wanted to help them. But at the moment on this website, we've got no pages, so there's nowhere to send them to a contact page. We will be doing this real soon. Um, there is no GDPR because I'm not collecting any data. I'm not installing any cookies. I'm not doing anything at the moment with this website. So it is as boring and as plain and bland as we can possibly make it. Um, I am probably gonna just turn that text back to black because I, I think it works better. So I'm gonna turn it, instead of actually taking the, com com the command out, I'm gonna just use the he hex code for black and publish. Oh, let's get rid of that and refresh. There we go. And I'm gonna leave it as it is. Now, to me, this is how I normally start building a website. So what we've got going on here, just real quick, is we've got the hero bar, which I've done in a previous tutorial. We've upgraded the theme. And this is where I now basically start turning on each individual different section of our website and basically build the site up. But even working with this, it's far better than using that maintenance page that I showed you on a previous plugin tutorial which did its job, but this looks just so much more nicer. And at the end of the day, this is where people are gonna be and wanna come to. So this is how I am basically gonna leave my site now for the next couple of days until I come back and show you what we're gonna be doing on the next tutorials. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy my little tutorial. Please subscribe, stay notified, and I will see you on another video real soon.